All right, so here we are inside of iClone, and we are going to be attacking uh, the creation of a storyboard panel. So, but just because we're doing something specific, uh, doesn't mean that this is the only thing you can do. All right, so uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to be building. We're going to be building a similar panel to one of these, and this is something that I built inside of uh, or with the assistance of Stable Diffusion. Uh, so I'm going to take you through the steps and to how to create a panel like this. There's a lot of challenges that, that have to be overcome, but I'm going to show you how to streamline all of that nice and easy. All right. Um, the first thing that you can see is that there's uh, very interesting angles on the panel itself, which are not so easy to achieve with uh, the basic uh, open pose model. Uh, but you can do that by way of prompting a little bit and... Uh, the other thing is the full control of two or more characters. And um, and that's one of the things that I'm gonna be showing you a shortcut for uh, as we create a finished uh, product. So here we are inside of iClone. This is the open poser model. And uh, it's fully rigged, so it'll accept any kind of motion capture data, any data that already exists in your iClone collection, any data that you can bring in from Mixamo. And it's very easy to use. Uh, you can grab this character and just start posing them around like you do with any other 3D software. It's a lot easier and more convenient than working with it in Blender. You know, you don't have to mess around with all sorts of like... Uh, uh rigging stuff um i don't even know what they call that stuff it's, it's a little bit above my head to be honest i tried working with uh, a model that somebody else made for blender and i damn near pulled my hair out so uh, i decided to make my own so yeah this is a fully customizable character and you can pose them just like any other 3d model like uh you know that's made for uh, manipulating inside of open pose. Um, so, okay. So the other thing is that it does accept, uh, uh, motions, uh, pre-made motions. Like I said, you can work with, um, you can work with any motion that's inside of your iClone, uh, by just dragging and dropping it onto the character. So now you have a character that pretty much moves around and uh yeah if you just want to grab just random pose or whatever of a thing that's already been made you can already just you know all right so i'm going to work with that so that is the you know you just ex you export that frame and you use that as your reference so that's kind of what i'm going to be doing and i'm going to be doing a panel similar to the ones that i showed earlier uh and this is just a storyboard panel uh you can use this technique for building comic books uh even full-on animation because you can export the frame sequences uh, and use the batch processing in stable diffusion to uh control the motion of a stable diffusion character so that's another beast in and of itself but I'm just going to focus on the basic uh, task at hand and you can evolve that this procedure, this workflow into your own thing. So, yeah, you know what? I actually kind of like this pose here. It's like a very dynamic looking thing. I'm going to go ahead and keep it. So I'm going to select this and I'm just going to select remove motion object animation. So now the entire thing got stuck at that frame, basically. Well, I spoke too early. Let's do it again. So we select the character, remove object animation, and that should have removed the the motion. Yeah, that moved that removed the motion. It didn't remove it from the camera. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video without any editing, because I want you all to see the little mistakes that I make. So if I select this camera here, I can remove the object animation of the camera itself. So now I'm stuck with that one frame that I liked. So let's grab this character here and then we'll select them and uh, we'll with ho while holding down the control key, I'm going to grab this green arrow and that's going to allow me to quickly duplicate. So now I can just pose this guy around and we'll find another animation to work with him. Again, you can you can pretty much work with whatever animation you want. You can make your own. You can pose them manually. You can do whatever the heck you want. See if I can. Okay, here's a good one. Very interesting looking. 
So the thing is, we want to create a dynamic pose or frame that involves the two characters interacting. That's uh, that's not that easy to do in Stable Diffusion uh, to control that. And I'm going to show you the trick in a minute. So basically, these two characters are kind of fighting. I don't know what the hell they're doing. They're, they're, this guy's getting ready to punch, but he's blocked. He's defending against uh, a previously thrown punch. That should be good enough, right? And uh, you might have decent random results if you export this as is. But what I recommend is uh, once you have the, the action that you want, you frame it and uh, you click on this export thing and you export it as your dimensions of what you're gonna be doing. My panel is two to one, so I'm gonna frame it like this, like a cinematic uh, film. And I'm just gonna frame it like that. Uh, a lot of what people are doing are in portrait format, two to three, or they're doing the, the square thing, you know, 768 by 768 or 512 by 512. I mean, how you export this, that's all up to you at the end of the day. So um, so I'm just gonna set up my, my, my frame the way I want it. Maybe push this out a little bit more just like that. And uh, yeah, so if I were to click this render button, that's what my image would look like, right? And uh, But I don't want that because it may or may not work like that. Uh, but the fact that these things are interfering and overlapping each other, that all, almost always creates issues. So what we do is we go to the scene uh, panel and we'll turn off one of the characters first. Uh, we'll turn off. Oh, that's the camera. We'll turn off that guy first. And uh, I'll go to the render option and I'll render out the frame. Uh, just going to go to the poses thing. I'm going to call this guy. Well, I'm going to create a clean folder here. It's going to call it tutorial. I'm going to call this guy uh, player one. All right. So it looks like this. And then I'm going to go to my scene again. I'm going to turn this one on and I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to call this one player two. Now, unfortunately, there's no keyboard shortcut that I know of that allows you to easily just export the image, boom, 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 to speed up your workflow. So that kind of sucks. Um, you could probably do something else with screen captures and stuff, have them saved to a folder, so you don't have to go through all that. It'll save you a few seconds of your life. But it's still not that bad. Player two. Okay, so that's saved. So now I got two independent pictures. So the next thing that we do is we're going to fire up our stable diffusion. Let me see if I already have it running. Okay, yeah, it looks like I already have it running. And uh, so what I need is the user interface. So here we are. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna close my iClone chest yet because um, if for some reason something doesn't work, I can always go back in there or if I want to push the pose a little bit more, I um, I can come back to iClone, repose the character just a little bit, tweak them out, and then export the new image to use. So in order to do this particular workflow, you're gonna need Control Net, and you're going to need an extension, another extension, uh, which is da -da -da -da, the remove background extensions, okay? And these are already on your list. You just pretty much have to enable them. Uh, but basically, if you don't have them, just Google uh, remove background extension for stable diffusion and of course, control net. And there's a million tutorials on YouTube that'll show you how to do that. So how to install it, uh, which just basically involves putting the link on here and hit clicking this install button. But um, but yeah, that's uh, that's outside the scope of this tutorial. This So I'm going to assume that either you're going to do this or you have already done it. So those are the only two requirements uh, for this technique. So in the prompt, I'm going to write um, uh, a, a shot of a boxer defending against a punch. I'm going to run it with nothing so you can see what happens just with that and we'll kind of get an idea. 
Uh, for my model, uh, you know, you can choose whatever model you want. I'm using this uh, storyboarding model, which has kind of been trained to do uh, uh, somewhat painterly techniques. You still have to finesse it sometimes to get it to be more sketchy. But uh, I'm going to use that one because I am uh, demonstrating how to create a storyboard panel. That, that's kind of the main idea of this tutorial. So I'm running it now. And uh, I left it at 512 by 512. And this is the image that it generates, right? And as I generate more and more images, it's always going to be random unless I lock down my seed. Um, but that's, that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and lock down the seed because I kind of like that sketch uh, look and feel. So I'm going to keep that. I'm going to click on the this uh, button, uh, reuse seed from last generation. That's going to keep it right there. So that's good. Uh, but of course, we have no control over it. Over it. Um, I, I could, in fact, run it again, and it'll give me a completely different image. All right. So, but I'm going to keep that image. And this is the this is basically what I'm telling Stable Diffusion to do: a shot of a boxer defending against a punch. Now we're going to make this into a um, what was my dimensions? 768 by something, three something. Uh, an iClone. Let's see. 768 by 384. That's a two to, uh, two to one ratio. If I can find my way back. One more time, confer. 384. Okay. Did it again. <laughs> okay, three eight four by seven sixty eight. I'm keeping the same seed. I'm just gonna roll it again so you can see the aspect ratio change. And you'll see that I have no control over what stable diffusion really does. Um, but I'm going to now influence this pose by bringing in the first image, player one, and using it as a, as a guide for what I want. So I'm gonna enable it. I'm not gonna select anything for preprocessor because we're not preprocessing it. Uh, we did it inside of iClone, so we kind of preprocessed it manually. Uh, and the model that we'll be using is the open pose model. All right, so, now that that's set up, we're going to run it again so you can see what happens. So now you can see the pose that we created is following a bit more accurate the, uh, the pose that we, we made in, in iClone. Uh, there's a, you know, there's there's a few uh, hiccups here because this arm is supposed to be in the back and that arm is supposed to be in the front. Uh, that's just a product of the randomness and uh, you might have to generate a couple before you get the right one, but you know, you'll get it. If, uh, if you need any, uh, you, you can use your prompts. For example, we don't want the back and we want the character facing the camera. So that's how we'll modify it. We'll, we'll influence it. Let's see what happens now. So now Stable Diffusion knows that the character is facing the camera. Let's see if it obeys. So it's still not obeying. Let's try one more thing. We're going to give it more weight facing the camera. We're going to give it a weight of 1.5. And in the negative prompt, we're going to add uh, multiple characters because we don't want that second guy being generated. Uh, that might help it. So it got rid of the second guy. Oh, 
Okay, so I see that it's trying to work. Now I can see this arm as being an arm that's facing forward while that one is also a forward facing arm, but it's in the front. So it's a little bit wacky. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and roll the, this a little bit more. I'm gonna let uh, the CG, I'm gonna put move the CG, CFG scale a little higher to let, uh, um, let Stable Diffusion try, try its hand at being a little bit more creative. There we go. I think we got it. So you have to finesse it a little bit. You know, use your prompts. Uh, so my prompt in this case was a shot of a boxer defending against a punch. And then in parentheses, facing the camera uh, with a weight of 1.5. And the way that you add weights, uh, if it's something very important that you want to emphasize, is you select a part of the prompt and use control up and keep pressing up until you get the desired weight number or press down to go down in weight. So that's how you do, that's a quick uh, nifty little trick that a lot of people don't, don't know. Uh, let me get rid of that. All right, so I have an image that I like. I'm gonna keep that seed. Uh, I also, in the negative prompts, I, I told it basically don't put multiple characters, characters on my scene and uh, don't show the back. So that should help the, the, the system get a better idea of what I want because it's not always gonna be perfect. But you can see now that it pretty, ma it, it pretty much matched the pose that I wanted almost exactly. And uh, here's the other trick. If you have, uh, and it's also, this is a, a beyond the scope of this demonstration, but if you can take the time to train your your uh, stable diffusion, uh, you can actually m maintain more consistent character. So in this case, I have a character that's kind of based on my look. Uh, I'm gonna bring him in now, and this is done by using the, the Laura that you create when you're training it, okay? And, I'll, and, and, and if you guys are interested, I can uh, make a different tutorial that kind of goes a little bit into more detail as to how to create uh, these Loras, these training models. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna bring in the Ibis Fernandez at a 0 0.6. It's gonna give him that little chin hair and spiky hair, uh, more of a Hispanic look to him. So if I generate him just like that, um, I don't I don't think I need to put the keyword in, but if I do, I, I guess we'll we'll just add that in. But see what, how it comes out. So I, I do get the semi spiky hair. I don't like this particular art style. So it started influencing a little bit too much. So uh, I'm going to add the words here. My name. A shot of Ibis Fernandez, a boxer defending against a punch. And uh, I'll put a uh, Gray scale pencil sketch. I want to define the art style a little bit more. A gray scale pencil sketch of a shot of etc. 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 And I think this should give me the final image of what I want. I don't like where it's going with the foot, uh, but it fixed it. Okay, so it ended up giving me the, this particular look and feel that I, I do kind of like. But if you're not if you're not happy with it, you can always do a multiple role situation where you're gonna put like maybe like draw me four panels at, at a time, and uh, we'll roll it and then we'll pick one of those just to, just to see how many options it, it'll give us. Because sometimes you'll have to roll a bunch of times and. Uh, and I mean, and this, it is what it is. Sometimes it'll take you 30 seconds, you'll get it right away. And sometimes you'll just have to uh, finesse it until you get the exact image that you want. And um, in my case, I think I was almost there.
So it's, it's generating all the images at once and we'll be able to review them all. And uh, when I go for the second character, I'm not going to take that much time, okay? I'm just going to show you how, how the second character is generated and how it's composited nice and quick. So it looks like it's almost done. Okay, so the art style is pretty consistent. Uh, so that's always good. We're going to keep that seed so that the next thing that we do draw is going to keep that, that consistency. Okay. For, for my taste, I mean, you can go full on photorealistic. You can go an anime style, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. That thing is all up to you and your creativity and the models that you're using. I'm sticking with storyboards because that's kind of what I'm working on right now. Uh, and hopefully this is going to give you guys a better idea on how to better create your own storyboards or comic books, graphic novels and all sorts of uh, cool little uh, ideas, right? So I kind of like this one over here. Uh, I'm gonna stick with this one. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with this one. I'm gonna open up the folder where it's being saved to. And there is my image. So here I'm going to copy it. And uh, let's see if I have my Photoshop running. I do uh, somewhere. Um, so I'll go to Photoshop because I was working on this storyboard before. So I'll go to File, New. And it already knows that I have something on my clipboard. So it already knows the, the, the size that I want it in. Just Control V to paste. And now it's on there, right? So I'll move that out of the way. Let's create the second image. So I'm gonna keep everything exactly the same. Uh, all the parameters are exactly the same. And I'm gonna clear out this image here for the pose. And I'm gonna bring in player two image. And that guy is like this. And uh, so this guy, I'm gonna change his name, even though I don't have a trained model of him. Uh, I'm going to use a, 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 a character name. I'm going to call him Jimmy, Jimmy Dean, a boxer. And what he's doing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that he's throwing a punch because, you know, you still want to help. Even though we have the motion there, you still want to help guide stable diffusion as to what it is that it's seeing and what it is that you want from that. So it's a boxer ducking and throwing a punch. And, and he is also facing the camera, I believe. So I'm gonna leave all that there. I'm gonna take away this Laura. Uh, you can add other things like, uh, so now that you establish that you have a name, that Jimmy Dean is a boxer, you can also say, Jimmy Dean wears a <laughs> mohawk and a tutu. A mohawk, oh yeah, that would be fun. A mohawk, a tutu and ballerina shoes All right that should be fun so let's generate it perfect So here's the thing, once this image is generated, oh, I forgot I had left the, the setting there for four images. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna have to sit through it and see what it comes up with in those four images. And I'll just pick one of those that I like the best. Um, let's 
So, you know, if you're working really fast, you can easily get away with just doing one image at a time. You'll Once you get your rhythm going, you have the seed that you're going to work with, your desired uh, art style and everything, you can continue using that over and over. And, and nine times out of ten, you will get lucky and just get it right on the first image. So it's just a matter of, you know, just playing around with it at first just to warm up the system. Uh, so here's my images. There's one. There's two there's three and there's four so i kind of like this one this one's a little bit more accurate based on my 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 pose here so i'm going to keep that one he's wearing his tutu and ballerina shoes and the mohawk that's beautiful so now here's the thing normally if you're going to composite these things you got to go through photoshop and remove the background manually and do all, all sorts of uh of fun stuff right that we all hate so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because we had that extension, that remove background extension, I'm actually going to do it from here. It's going to use its own uh, depth mats to isolate the character and cut them out of the scene. So I'm going to send them to extras. And at the bottom of the extras area, we don't really have to do anything here. We're just going to select uh, uh, from the remove background area. I'm just going to use the first one, U2Net. I have no idea what any of these all, all do, but I know the first one works. Uh, most of those work pretty much the same. I, I haven't noticed the difference yet. Uh, so we'll click Generate. And we have our image with the background completely removed. We can see we still have that extra limb there. And I could have gotten rid of that limb if I wanted to by putting it in the negative prompt, you know, adding the words extra limbs, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it's no big deal. You know, we're working in Photoshop. So I'm going to open up my export folder. And let's see here. Here's my image that I'm working on. And from the export folder, which is right here, I believe. No, that's the wrong one. Uh, this is the export folder. Uh, it has its own little thing under the extras, which is drag and drop it there. And, that, and that's pretty much it. You know, we can start finessing it. In Photoshop, our, our, our degree of uh, actual uh, manipulation that we have to do to the file doesn't really, it's very minimal. So I'm just going to make this guy a little bit larger. Maybe that's too big. All right, now we'll just use some of uh, Photoshop's built-in tools to remove certain things that we don't want. So this one's going to use the edit. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Is it image? No, it's under. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is it? It's under Content Aware Fill. You gotta make sure the correct layer is selected, though. That's what it is. Content Aware Fill. I, was, I had the wrong layer selected, and it didn't have any content to to work with. Uh, so we're gonna be removing this image here, and really all you have to do is select the surrounding areas. Just draw a little brush stroke there, and it's gonna use that data to fill it in. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. We we'll hit OK, and that thing is gone. And we'll do the same thing for this third leg here. Actually, I, I, don't, I don't think it's even that big of a deal. We'll just cut it out because it's against uh, transparent stuff. Make sure you got the right. Uh, sometimes you got to rasterize these layers um, before you can cut parts of them on. There it is. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we have a storyboard panel that we created. It didn't really take that long, uh, you know, uh, for some traditional artists, uh, you know, you could probably draw this faster than it took me to, uh, to generate it, but that's not the point. The point is I can, I'm not a traditional storyboard panel artist and I'm not able to do this kind of level drawings. Um, uh, 
that fast and I hate storyboarding. So for me, being able to do this is, you know, it's kind of a blessing. Uh, so now I'm able to create really good storyboards with that with very minimal effort. Uh, so there it is. Uh, we just made a storyboard panel using two characters that are interacting with each other. Uh, you know, you could have, I could have made, uh, like, let's say if this guy's face was over here, we, we, you know, cut this piece off here and have the, the head pop up to the foreground so you can make them interact even more. But uh, yeah, that's an easy way to have multiple characters doing exactly what you need them to do uh, using stable diffusion. And uh, it all starts with this open post character, which, uh, uh, yeah, you can use to, uh, you know, you can do it with uh, any kind of motion capture, uh, predefined uh, poses inside of iClone. Uh, it's a lot easier to work with because you, it, it's, it's like a fully rigged, rigged puppet, you know. See here, modify animation. We'll go to edit motion layer. I'm gonna raise his arm like this, and we'll we'll just kind of play around with the camera. So I'm just gonna make a character that's posed like this uh, in my render tab which is going to change it to 512 by 512 which is what a lot of people are working with by default uh, and I'll just kind of frame my character the way I want them to be you know I'm cutting off I can cut off parts of the, the body I don't have to do the full body I can just frame it the way I want like if it's a portrait and I can export that and use that as my guide. That's my portrait. I'm going to export a second one, a full body one, so I can demonstrate that. I'm going to turn them around this way. All right, so uh, we'll do one more quick demonstration and uh, we'll uh, call this video complete. So I'm going to bring in this uh, portrait shot, change it to 512 by 512. We're going to use a different model. See uh, a portrait of a man deep in thought, cyberpunk style night rain fog. We'll do an 80 millimeter lens bokeh. It's bokeh is that blurry shit that happens when you put things out of focus. And uh, what else can we throw in there? We'll just leave it at that for now. We have this influence going on. And uh, okay, so here's gonna be my story, uh, my my storyboard sketch of that scene using this pose that I brought in. Looks like it's gonna give me multiple versions because I keep forgetting to put that number four back to a one. Uh, I really only wanted one so for demonstration purposes, but that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll see the multiple renderings and uh, you can see that sometimes it doesn't get it right. Sometimes it, uh, but the post works, you know. Um, 
So here he is. This uh, aside from the hand that's not going up, the the pose is pretty is fairly consistent. That one's a little bit more consistent. We got that bokeh effects in the background. Okay, so you can see that because we cut off parts of the arms, it doesn't have that elbow joint there, but it has the other one bringing in. It, it does kind of struggle sometimes. That does kind of tend to break it a little bit, but uh, you, you get the overall thing, and then you can, of course, you know, tweak it further because uh, one of the things is, you know, this character is facing the camera. The man faces the camera, so that should help it readjust because sometimes it'll take the pose but it'll put the camera in the wrong place so that's another thing to look for i'm gonna give it a weight of 1.5 i'm only going to generate one i don't want to generate four again so you can see here that it's starting to give me the the angle of the shoulders it got them wrong got the arm right it built something here because it thought it did see something there but i don't think it translated it into an arm but that you know that's still kind of fine you know i could go back into iClone and readjust my position let me see here i'll tab so whenever that happens we can always go to iClone it just kind of readjust it, you know, we can always go back in here and uh, maybe just zoom in a little bit more so it's not so broken. And we'll render it out like that. Call it portrait again. So I want, I want, I want you guys to see this video as an unedited uh, thing because you get to see what really happens, you know, the kind of mistakes that you're likely to make or the kind of little things that the glitches that you're likely to run into and some of the solutions that I come up with in order to get that that result. So now it should be a little bit better because you can see more of the image. There you go. It's almost exactly the way that we have it in the pose. So that that's really not too shabby, you know. We can, if we want to turn them around a little bit more, we can go back into iClone, rotate the camera around a little bit more to push the angle. Uh, we can adjust the head, and then we come back here, make him look up, look down, uh, raise his arm a little bit more. So yeah, that's uh, actually not bad. Uh, so it's still giving me random um, uh, color styles, but that's kind of the setting that I have on it right now. Uh, let's try it with a different uh, model, and we'll get a different result. But we're still, we'll still use the same seed. So now that I have the anything model, this should give me a more comic bookish, animeish type of style. And uh, so, but this is not really about you know uh, models and styles and stuff like that. This is all about the open post model that you can use within um within uh iclone to basically control what you do in stable diffusion a little bit better so in this case it it thinks that it's using cameras the man faces the camera uh, <laughs> or maybe you got it from there i'm gonna hit put here the word camera we don't want we don't want any cameras in the picture, so we put the word camera in the negative prompt. So that should remove it from his hands. So now you have a guy with no cameras, and he's doing the pose, pretty much like like it's intended inside of the iClone thing. Um, yeah, you can clean up the picture more using Loras and finessing your finessing your your. Um, your your prompt and your, and your settings a little bit more. Um, so let's uh, let's try the other one, the full body one. 
let me see here. I'm gonna try to make a really pretty picture. Um, I'll use this high res fix with a R ESR GAN times four uh, upscaler. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm not really upscaling it. I'm just having a double processed. So I'm just gonna switch it to one. I'm gonna leave everything here the same. Well, high res. I'm gonna do four high res steps, and uh, let's bring in the other one, the full body image. Uh, we'll render this one just as is, and uh, here we go. So based on the blurriness here, I can see that it is getting the, the poses uh, pretty much the way I want. Uh, it's going to draw the hands on the sides. So let's see. Arms up. Let's add a little hint of Aller art style. Zero point seven. So I can see the arm up there, but at some point during the high res fix, it puts the arm down. Okay, it looks like it's going to keep it up there this time. So there you have it. There's our image. Let's see. I'm going to do one more render. And see what we get. I should have told it to do something with like much brighter colors. He wants to put a camera on his hand. He thinks it's taking a picture. Oh, it thinks it's on a phone. <laughs> yeah, I can see that based on the in the image there. It looks like he might be on the phone. We have the word phone. Da, da, da. Let's see here. And, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of things that you can do too. As long as you don't overlap the poses, you can also get away with doing character turnarounds. Let me, I'm going to wait for this to finish and I'm going to demonstrate that. Yeah, it's kind of cute. I mean, it gets the general pose because of the way that the angle is and everything. So, uh, the this arm here should be at the bottom but it doesn't read it like that um so you'll have to like finesse the uh prompt a little bit better all right so now i'm going to go into my clone and i'm just going to do a another pose on this character content i'm just going to make him standing like that and we'll go to this guy here. We're just gonna delete him. We'll go to the front. And we'll just pose him. We got one, two, three, Let's 
Okay. So we go to modify. I'm going to make a bigger image this time around. And uh, it is, you don't have to do all this. You render your stuff out any way you like. It's, it's just ideally you want to render your things in a manner that's uh, similar to what you're going to be using inside of Stable Diffusion. So in this case, it's a uh, two by two to one aspect ratio, uh, 1024 by 512. Just going to render that out. We'll call it model. And we'll switch over. A model sheet of a character. Let's say a man standing in a relaxed pose. We'll just leave it at that, uh, nice and basic. Uh, we'll bring in the reference image. And uh, we'll increase the size of this guy, 1024. And we're just going to hit the render button. Uh, I'm not sure if I need this high res fix for something that's already this big, but whatever. This is the last demonstration, so we'll take a we'll take a shot. So I could have done like four different variations of this so that it'll allow the system to try multiple versions and one of those is going to be fine. Uh, in this case, oh, it's going in a completely different direction. It's giving me additional poses that I didn't ask for, but uh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes that happens when you do the high race fix, it goes in one direction and then it changes direction and draws something completely di different during the upscale procedure. But you can see that I have the first pose there and I, I have this pose and uh, I believe this one is coming from the models, but that's really not what we want. We want to be able to like really control it. So we're going to get rid of this high risk fix for now. And we're gonna roll the dice again. Oh, we're good, we'll get, we'll get, we'll get rid of that seed. We'll roll the dice again. See, there you go. Cause it's giving me the exact three that I wanted, but during the high, the high risk fix, uh, I have it set to a certain way that it kind of starts over. Uh, I don't know why it does that but it's something to watch out for. It does it sometimes. And that's uh, that's on Stable Diffusion's side. So it did it again. Do I, did I leave it on? I got Restore Faces. Why did I turn that on? Let's interrupt it. Oh, it might also have to do with the fact that I selected Character Sheet, so that's my bad. Let's just say a man standing on a relaxed pose. Yeah, when you put character sheet, it's gonna try to fill in the whole thing with different poses. Uh, yeah, I, I should, probably should have remembered that. Um, so here we go. Cause you can see when it starts working, you can see the diffuse model there, the actual poses that I want. It's just that at some point it changes course on me and it starts drawing something else. But these are things that you're likely to run into. So by seeing me run into them, uh, hopefully you'll have a better understanding as to how to deal with them. So, I mean, technically it's giving me the exact poses that I want. Uh, ideally, this third pose should be uh, looking away from the camera. But that also has uh, an easy fix. So you can keep rolling the dice. You can keep uh, playing with it, have it generate images. 
And, uh, you know, you might have to do it three, four, five times, and it will give you the, the actual uh, poses that you want in terms of the direction to the camera. But uh, there's also other things you can do, like you can send it to InPaint, and uh, you can say, you can just kind of mask this guy out. We'll we'll try to regenerate him uh, looking away from the camera. So we still have a man standing in a relaxed post. With his back to the camera, that might be enough. We'll we'll find out. I'm gonna select the masked content original. And, uh, on, and we only want to generate what's been what's being masked because if I leave it here, it's going to try to regenerate all of this uh, sampling method. Uh, I think I was using what was I using? DPM plus SDE Karus. So let's see here. Anything else that I need to keep track of? I'm going to bring in the control net model so it knows the pose that I want. It's just going to sample because the images match the same size. It's just going to grab it from this region right here. Now you got to make sure you enable it and select the model. Open pose right there. Okay, let's uh, let's see what happens. Crossing our fingers. So yeah, so don't think uh, just because the software or Stable Diffusion doesn't do things exactly the way you want them to the first time around that it doesn't work or that you're going to have a hard time doing it. It's uh, it's really not that difficult. Once you get a feel for how to do things, uh, almost everything has a solution. If Stable Diffusion gives you a hand with 16 fingers, uh, you can go in there and fix the hand by doing pretty much the same thing I just did right now. Um, so yeah, there is our pose and there is our, you know, generated model, sh model sheet. And of course, you know, once you have your own characters trained or you get the right seed for the right characters that you want, uh, you know, sexy females, whatever animals, uh, you know, posing them around is not really a problem. The only other tips that I can give you is uh, it works best. Uh, for stuff like this with multiple characters under one single uh, render pass, when the skeletons or the, 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 the posing models don't actually overlap each other, it just it works a hundred times better. You might get decent results every now and then, but you won't have as much control over it. And, um, and yeah, you know, make use of... Uh, Make use of the same seed and uh, make use of the feature that uh, the remove background extension, because that's going to allow you to just drag and drop the two images that are pretty much matching in terms of camera angle and uh, rendering style. And you'll just drag and drop it onto your Photoshop and, you know, just put it on a layer and you're pretty much done. Um, so for me, that is what I am doing now. Cause I hate storyboards, man. I hate storyboarding, and uh, but this is something that at least it's bringing up, bringing back that fun aspect of storyboarding. I guess that I personally never found. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I mean, I've never been able to create storyboards of this quality ever in my life. And um, I could never imagine actually paying for else, somebody else to have something like this uh, made for me because uh, it would be very expensive, I'm sure. And uh, um, I just uh, I just can't see myself paying for that. You know, I, I don't have that kind of a budget, but having this superpower, uh, I'm able to have this type of content for my production, my pre-production, my pre-visualization stage. Um, but yeah, hopefully this gives you guys uh, some ideas on how to work with the open pose model. Uh, there are some freely available uh, stuff that you can work with within Stable Diffusion, but it's all manual. It's kind of weird, and uh, uh, you only like this one for example. You can only work with one character at a time, and yeah, you really do have to pretty much um, pose everything. It doesn't allow you to bring in motion capture. It doesn't allow you to bring in pre-made uh, motions. So for me, I, I just, I, I don't care too much for that. Then there's the open pose editor, which is like a little drag and drop thing where you can make all sorts of weird shit here. And uh, it's not, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty terrible in terms of the workflow. You can still get some decent results uh, sometimes, but, um, but yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not very, very user friendly uh so aside from that um there there's a there's one that somebody made for blender which is you know just as bad as the as the open post editor requires you to mess around in blender i mean if you if you're a newbie with 3d stuff uh, i'm mostly a newbie myself so um doing all those tweaks it's, it's just i can i can't imagine uh, myself going through all this clicky dicky behavior just to end up with one post that in the end, you know, I could just draw myself and get it done fast. So that's not the point, right? Uh, the point is just to be able to work fast and efficiently and get stuff done and get uh, pretty decent quality out of it. So, so yeah, uh, doing this inside of iClone is probably the easiest and most user-friendly approach that I've uh, encountered. And um, hopefully you guys get some good use out of it. All right. So if you have any questions, uh, yeah, it looks like we've reached the, almost the one hour mark. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments or reach out to me by email, uh, ibis at toontitan.com. Uh, this model will be available uh, probably by the time this video is up on the Reillusion Marketplace. And uh, you'll be able, you can download it from toontitan.com as well. Uh, I usually put my stuff a little bit cheaper at tombtitan.com because I don't have to pay commissions uh, to anybody. But uh, yeah, if you want to get it from tombtitan.com, uh, I mean, from uh, Reillusion and, uh, uh, you know, go through their uh, licensing stuff, uh, go ahead and download it from there. And because uh, they have that really easy installer that you could just, you know, once you buy it, it becomes available in your in your character library. Whereas if you buy it from Toontai and you kind of have to just drag and drop it manually into the right folder, uh, which is still not that big of a deal, but um, yeah. So by the time this video is over, um, this, uh, by the time this video is up, uh, this model should be up there. Uh, if you want to help support the channel, if you want to help yourself, uh, if you find this useful, go ahead and get it. You know, it's, uh, it's going to be super cheap and uh, hopefully you get some good use out of it. So. Till next time, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, peace.